Hi, hello, good morning, friends. Welcome back to my channel, Uchariya's Vlogs, to another new exciting travel vlog. And today we are going to explore a place that is recognized as one of the best heritage cities of India and was ruled by Kakatiya dynasty. That place is none other than Warangal, that is the second largest city of the Lingana state and just 150 kilometers away from Hyderabad. So we will be traveling from Hyderabad and while going, I'll show you all the details of how to go, where to stay, if you are staying there and every details. So I'll be getting ready now and then we'll start our journey to explore this beautiful place. So let's go. So guys, as you can see, we already have started our journey and we are starting from Kondapur. So from Kondapur through ORR, it is almost 190 km up and 190 km down. That means almost 380 km approx and it takes around 4 hours of time. Since we started early in the morning around 7 am, we didn't get the traffic jam in the city. The roads are very good and perfect for them who loves long drives. In between of Hyderabad to Warangal, you will get another point named Yadagiri Gutta, which is also a tourist attraction. You can get various food points and dhabas in between. We took a small tea break and breakfast halt in between. The total cost of toll for up and down is almost 950 rupees, that means almost 500 each side, and fast tags are mandatory for the toll gets to reach Warangal. Otherwise, you will have to give double amount as penalty. You can go and stay there for a night or you can return back on the same day also we will return on the same day today we will cover the points named warangal fort thousand pillar temple badragali temple pakhal lake if you are staying for one day you can go to famous laknavaram lake that is almost 75 kilometers from warangal and that is a very beautiful lake so i'll definitely suggest you to go over there so the first point that I will share with you all is how to reach Warangal. There are various ways to reach Warangal that are by air, by rail and by road. If you are going by road, then Warangal is well connected by road. Warangal is connected by long distance deluxe buses from Bengaluru, Chennai, Hyderabad, Tirupati, Anantapur, Hubli and Belgram. Direct buses connect Hyderabad to Warangal in every 15 minutes and it takes about 3 to 4 hours from the state capital. If you are willing to go by rail, then there are plenty of trains available from Hyderabad to Warangal. Warangal is connected well to major cities of India by rail. Warangal is a major railway junction on the Hyderabad New Delhi and Chennai Kolkata route. Auto rickshaws and buses are available from the station. And if you are willing to come from different state to Warangal by air, then there are no regular flights from other major cities of the country to Warangal. Nearest airport is Rajiv Gandhi International Airport, Hyderabad, located 160 kilometers away from Warangal. The airport is well connected by flight to Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi, Bangalore, West Bengal, etc. So guys, finally we have reached our today's first destination that is the Warangal Fort and this was the capital of Kakatiya dynasty and you can see the fort at my back and some uh, maintenance work is going on so we'll go and see and definitely we'll show you. So let's go. Warangal is recognized as one of the best heritage cities of India. It is 150 kilometers away from state capital Hyderabad. It is also the second largest city in the state of Telangana. The city's name is derived from the Telugu word Urugallu. Uru means one and the word Gallu means stone. The city was the capital of the great Kakatiya rulers According to the history of Warangal, the Prola Raja of Great Kakatiya dynasty built the beautiful city in 12th century. The Kakatiyas who ruled the place for more than 200 years have left the succeeding generations many grand monuments and architectural wonders like the famous Warangal Fort and many other ancient structures. The Warangal Fort, which is the main attraction of the city, is spread over a radius of 19 km between Warangal and Hanamkonda. The fort was constructed in the 13th century in the rule of Kakatiya. King Ganapati Deva. The Warangal Fort is most famous for its graceful and finitely curved arches and pillars. The fort has four large stone gateways. So without talking much, I will show you the beautiful architecture in details.
we have witnessed the beautiful Varangal fort now we are going to our second destination that is a thousand pillar temple so let's go so hello guys now we came to our second destination that is thousand pillar temple you can see at my back it is written as thousand pillar temple the temple which is having thousand pillars so we will see definitely and from there uh, is the entrance gate and it is the car and bike parking so let's go and explore the another most popular place to visit in Warangal is a Thousand Pillars Temple located at the base of Hanamkonda Hill. It was built in 12th century by the Kakatiya king Rudra Deva. Dedicated primarily to Lord Shiva, this temple is also known by the name of Sri Rudraswara Swami Temple. At this temple, three deities Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu and Lord Surya are worshipped. Currently under the maintenance of Archaeological Survey of India, Thousand Pillars Temple is known for intricately carved pillars. A massive sculpture of Nandi curved out of a single rock is another attraction of this temple. The Tughlaq dynasty of Turkic origin destroyed the Thousand Pillar Temple during their invasion of South India. It stayed in bad shape for a few years with fallen out columns, broken roofs and broken statues. In 2004, the temple was renovated by the government of India. So let me show you the beautiful Thousand Pillar Temple. came to our next point that is the famous and beautiful Vajrakali temple. Along with the historical importance and religious significance, natural rock formation around the temple also make this temple a much visit place. In this temple, the main deity is goddess Vajrakali who is shown in sitting position. So guys, now we came to Vajrakali temple that is one of the most attractive and most important place of Varangal as well as Hyderabad. You can see the temple is made back and here is one Goshala. So I will show you everything. While entering the temple, in left hand side you can see the Goshala. In the temple, the main deity is Goddess Vadragali, who is shown in sitting position. She is shown with eight hands, each carrying one weapon and is wearing an alluring crown. The idol is 2.7 meters and is made of stone. A fierce lion, the sacred vehicle of the goddess, is placed opposite to the sanctum sanctum of the temple. There are many of other shrines inside the temple as well. In Mahamandapam, separate shrines of Lord Shiva, Hanuman Temple, Shuvramaniya Swami and Navagrahas along with images of Uma Maheshwara images on stone are placed. They are said to be among the oldest idols of the deities which have been curved out of the stone. Shrine of Lord Vigneshwara which is built outside the main temple is comparatively recent. Now bless your eyes by seeing Vajrakali Mata.
after the puja you can get various prashadams in the prashad counter and you have to buy ticket for that and it will cost you around 20 to 30 rupees and i have taken one laddu and one lemon rice so let's have it The next and last point to visit is Pakhal Lake that is around 50 km east from Warangal and the lake is open to public from 6 am in the morning to 6 pm in the evening and the best time to visit Pakhal Lake is in the winter season because this is the time when the lake looks mesmerizing with large greenery all around. Now it's time to return and it's showing 188 km and 3 or 30 minutes to reach so we have enjoyed a lot and if you like my video then don't forget to do like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel to see more videos and we will meet you in my next vlog. Till then, bye-bye.